my goodness. It's so beautiful here. <sighs> Being in the forest is absolutely magical. Once again, it's a little bit chilly because it's still not quite spring, but I'm at a local forest and I'm just kind of wandering around looking for a spot to paint. watercolor with a little gouache mixed in again um, practicing the light falling through the trees this kind of dappled light effect the really strong highlights and really strong shadows I just love that so let's go for a little adventure <laughs> Okay, we're off-roading a little bit because I spotted this fallen tree and I thought it would be a good seat. Pretty much everywhere I look is gorgeous and paint-worthy. My water fits kind of nicely in this little foam thing. I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. <laughs> that was a little crooked. I wish I could fly this and paint at the same time. There's a bit of warmth here and there. Let's let it Let's do its thing. I can really easily lift the paint off of this paper, which is awesome for painting trees that are highlighted. So even though I didn't do a sketch and like plan out where each tree is going to be, I still get a little bit of time to work with that. It's not perfect strategy, but you know, if you just want to work quickly and get a nice even uniform background then it's great in the distance I'm gonna have some darker trees I think that aren't gonna be like super detailed I really love using like chunky brush strokes when I'm working quickly 
so a flat brush is great for that. It just lets me focus less on the on every single detail and maybe capture more of the light. I want a few of these trees to be in shadow. I know this is another long video, so if you can't watch the whole thing in one setting, then I totally understand, but I would super appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up, and if you want to see more like this, subscribe before you go. I also want to let you guys know that if you want further instruction on how to paint forests like this, I just recently did a paint along for my Patreons showing how I painted this. And it's a very beginner friendly step by step, like I hold your hand through the whole process. <laughs> so feel free to jump over there if you're interested and thank you so much. Okay, I let it dry a little bit. It's not completely dry, so I'll still get some softness. I wanna balance the soft edges and the hard edges. In general, I try to keep my soft edges in the distance and in the very, very, very foreground. I mean, that's not always the case, but then my focus is usually somewhere in the mid ground. Like for instance, in this case, the trees in the mid area are going to be in more detail. There's someone behind me kind of creepy. Okay, they're going. Right now I'm just trying to put in these long shadows that are kind of spilling through the forest. Some people ask me why I do a combination of watercolor and gouache and not just one or the other. And I guess it's because I just love both <laughs> so much. I love the mixing ability and, and blending and beauty of gouache and the matte colors, like just how the paint looks when it's dry, it's beautiful. And the dry brush texture I can get with gouache is just incredible. And I love the softness and spontaneity of watercolor. So for me, working as a hybrid, it just works really well for my aesthetic, I guess, and the way I like to paint. So I like to, I like to react instinctively. So maybe it's just about the color or just about the light in the situation. And if I start with watercolor, it's very... Uh, it can be very flowy and like I said, spontaneous, and that lets me work quickly and let things blend and not be obsessed with every single detail from the very beginning. And I feel like I can capture the feeling of a place much easier that way. And then I can come back in with some gouache and add all of those other things I love, like the, um, the, the dry brush and the thick texture and just the matte quality of gouache. I love how it looks. <laughs> I'm kind of experimenting with this purple on the trees, so it's going to be a little intense before I come back in with the gouache. I mean, I want some of it to show through, but Gouache is a lot of, it's very relaxing. Watercolor, watercolor can be a little intimidating and not stressful, but like you have to preserve the highlights from the beginning of the painting, right? So you're constantly thinking about that. And at times it can make it a little bit less relaxing. So yeah, if you want to enjoy being outside and having the beautiful sounds and smells and sights of nature and just have a relaxing painting session, I can highly recommend this strategy. So 
give it a try. I don't know. Just you really never know until you try it. Let's get a little splash again. I feel like when it's looking too neat and tidy, I just need to mess it up a little. <laughs> Especially in areas where it's not like going to be really in focus. On such a small piece of paper, this works really well for like an abstract form of foliage or something. And then with a little vertical while it's wet you can kind of mess it up even even more and get more variety but with the watercolor it just flows so beautifully also i apologize if the sound is difficult to if anything is difficult to hear if the sounds of nature are not as loud because i'm using my gopro which is inside a case i think it gets muffled I just hope it's not too windy because it's very gusty today. <laughs> I could do this whole thing with watercolor, but again, I really want that texture of the gouache for this painting. I love doing that for, with forest scenes. But first, capture some of that light moving through the trees. Um, and also, when I mix watercolor and gouache outside, most of the times I'm using my watercolor palette. So this is just a pretty standard plastic palette, and it's all watercolor. This is watercolor, and I have a couple dollops of white gouache up here. So I keep my gouache mixes up here and my watercolor mixes down here. Uh, and because I'm using white as my gouache and no other gouache colors, it means that anytime I mix anything with the gouache, it's going to lighten up quite a bit. So it'll be really hard to get a super dark gouache, which I have to keep in mind as I'm painting, you know. It kind of depends what I'm going for, I guess. I can get a pretty dark color. And I never really want to go super black anyway. Oh my god, so we've been watching like more scary movies and horror and stuff. Not intense horror movies because I'm too scared. <laughs> but I'm outside in the woods alone and it's daytime, it's sunny, it's beautiful, and I'm pretty close to a road actually, but I still have this sense of creepiness. Like I, that person was walking near me, behind me, and I was like, um, can I help you? <laughs> like, well, get away from me. <laughs> this giant forest, why are you right near me? Because I'm not even on the trail. And I remember back in the US, I was way more scared being alone outside because I don't know like there's hunters a lot of hunters out in the in the mountains in Colorado and you just never know there's I just got this sense that like it was scarier <laughs> but in Scotland I've never really felt that I've always felt safe on my own um, and I do carry like stuff to protect myself and I have self-defense skills not like jujitsu or anything but uh yeah I don't know I just never really felt scared but now that I'm watching horror movies and scary movies I'm like getting that fear <laughs> which is so annoying I mean it is better to have some fear than to be completely oblivious and ignorant like fear can keep you safe but yeah anyways I might need to take a break from watching scary movies because of that I don't want to like 
have be having like visions in my head of stuff <laughs> that's gonna happen. I am slightly regretting sitting on this log. My leg is falling asleep, my butt's falling asleep. I'm using more grays in the distance as well. Uh, it's gouache. With the white, it's like a little bit more muted. Uh, and so far, like a lot of this is kind of watered down. I don't really have anything super opaque yet. So. I'm like so tempted to get my ink out. I love ink and wash. And I just f thought like when I sat down, I'm like, it would be just beautiful to do an ink and wash piece here. So I don't know, we'll see. Uh, now I'm gonna paint over some of the highlights on the trees. Uh, mainly I'm just trying to get rid of some of that intense yellow. I like it in little places here and there, but it's a bit too much. This side over here is really wet still. Uh, but at the moment I'm just going for the bark texture on some of the trees because it's got that beautiful vertical, those striations in the bark. Um, at first I was thinking I want the background to be lighter, but as I paint, I really think it would benefit from being darker. Okay, so basically I'm thinking it'll be lighter in the background here and darker over here. I think that'll make it more interesting. Plus it'll make the trees look more vivid. The light will look more intense as it hits those trees. See already it's working a little bit better. Some of the sunlit foliage will... This will be nice and faded in the background. What I've, it's interesting, this paper, I've found that it's really difficult to, with watercolor, to get things really, really dark. I have to use like pure watercolor, not diluted at all, for it to just stay dark. It's like, it gets soaked into the paper and then it just vanishes almost. More cooler greens, darker colors. And then I'll come back with my bright yellows and rusty colors for the brighter for the brighter lines coming through the forest. It's always a tedious process to do the grasses because um, it's single lines, <laughs> but it ends up being so worth it. It looks so much better than if I just used a big like fan brush and sweep them all on at once when you're doing if you do it like I'm doing where you have watercolor and gouache and you're doing gouache last um, if you kind of muddy up some of the areas and keep other areas vibrant with your first couple layers I feel like it gives it a little bit more realistic feeling because you're going to come back with gouache and add more color and detail and stuff and you can adjust things appropriately rather than starting with a perfectly even tone in the background or like everything's really vibrant or everything is completely muddy if you just 
give it more variety. I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. <laughs> I'm trying to be better with using grays instead of just making everything so vibrant all the time. There's lots of bushes and all sorts of different plants in here, so I don't want to have everything look the same. Especially the heather. The heather is very textured. It's not, it's not a smooth plant at all. <laughs> and the forest is full of it right now. It's what is causing a lot of this brown color on the forest floor. The moss underneath is beautifully vibrant, bright green. And some of the shadowy tones in the heather are this really pretty dark green as well. But the majority of it is brown. <laughs> So don't forget about horizontal marks, fallen branches and like, for instance, the log I'm sitting on right now, like there are elements that go side to side in the forest branches above as well. A lot of times with gouache, you it dries much different than when it looks like when it's wet. Like it'll dry lighter or darker. So you don't really know for sure until you put it down. And then you can kind of come back and adjust things. I'm going to come back in with some of those highlights now. Because it's finally starting to dry. Uh, and I am using pretty much pure white for this part because it's good. It's slightly diluted, diluted, and it'll let some of that under color show through. So it won't, it won't just look like pure white in the end. I mean, a couple spots will, but it's all relative <laughs> in the painting. Uh, for some of my really dark details, like the really intense uh, shadowy bark textures, I'm using pure watercolor. It's not diluted by a lot of water and it's not sort of dulled down by the white gouache. And for fun, I'm using perylene violet in a lot of spots because it's just a beautiful dark color. And it just adds a bit of character. It's not, definitely not boring. <laughs> Okay, so what are my lessons learned for this painting? Well, I am always surprised by this paper. Uh, it's a Sea White of Brighton sketchbook. It's not cotton, 100% cotton, so it's trickier to work on. And I always forget how different it is to paint with watercolor, especially. <laughs> the paint just doesn't do what I want it to do all the time. Um, so I probably should have taken a little more care, used less water in the beginning. I wouldn't have so many issues with waiting for it to dry and uh, making it difficult to come back in with my dry brush textures that I was so excited about. And also, I should have thought about how I wanted the background to be a little bit darker on the left side and brighter on the right side from the very beginning. That would have helped. <laughs> Need to get a little variety there. And Potter's Pink is also added in for some of that orangey reddish tone.
and even a few strokes of pure white which dulls down or gets dull, uh, muddied up gets uh what am i trying to say it blends instantly with whatever is under it because It's not completely dry. So, a bit of really bright yellow or yellow ochre will make those feel like they're in highlight. And then I can finish the foreground shadows because that's really going to make the background seem, the light seem more intense. I definitely learned a lot this time in terms of color mixing, what works, what doesn't. And that's the kind of thing that happens slowly over time. Each time you do a painting, you learn something, which is part of the fun. I, I think it's that mystery is like, well, to me, it's thrilling. <laughs> And I'm, I'm constantly chasing more knowledge, <laughs> more experience, because the more experience I have, the more intuitively I can paint. And that makes me, it makes the session more relaxed. But I think I'll call it done soon. Cause it's a little chilly.